Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Archie Reason Digital, where we make photorealistic assets together. So for today's video, I will texture this cool Balinese pattern in Substance Painter and attempt to achieve a photorealistic look. I have been traveling in Bali for the past two and a half months and got really inspired by all the traditional ornaments that are everywhere. Here's the reference I'm using to create this pattern. I want to show you how to approach this pattern procedurally with the limited knowledge I have with Substance. Please keep in mind that I'm still figuring out my own workflow in the software. Here's the geometry I will texture with the texture sets already been baked. So I did a little bit of planning before I started modeling. Since in the past I had trouble keep Substance running smoothly with many layers, so I decided to separate different material into different UDIMs. This way we don't have to instance every kind of material across all UDIM tiles. For this guy in the end, I have 5 UDIMs and 2k per UDIM. First, I will create a base wood material that goes across the entire object. So first, I'm creating a new folder. I will name it base wood. I will instance this folder across all UDIM tiles since they all share this material. Then I create a fill layer that also named base wood. I got some basic wood texture from Megascan. They already providing the normal map, a roughness map, and a height map that I need. I will plug these maps into my fill layer. Make sure the fill layer is using tri planner. I'm telling it twice. I'm also rotating it 90 degree because I think it just looks a little bit better. As you can see on the reference, there seems to be a coat of dark paint after the base wood. I will just quickly create another fill layer with that color. I will also share this layer across all UDIM tiles. From the reference, I can see that some of the paint are chipped off and you start to see a little bit of wood underneath. So we're going to create that right now. I'm just using a very basic mask builder and inverted it. I'm not super picky with this mask yet because we're going to have to create a lot of different kind of paint on top and the wood will just come out on certain spots. Want to show you how I organize the UDIMs according to the different color that's going to be on each UDIM. I want to quickly show you how I match the color of the texture to the reference. I have shown this technique before in past videos. Go into Photoshop and use Adjustments Match Color. You will need a little bit of a color sample from the reference. I did that a few times and captured all the major color from the reference. So the next thing I see that goes across all you dim are the white edges. I will create a new folder and name it White Edge, and I will instance this across all UDIM tiles. Then I create a fill layer and put it into the folder. We really just need the different color and the roughness for the white edge, so I will turn everything else off. I will plug in one of the color maps that I've created and uh, give it a different type of roughness. Make sure it's a tri planner again. I'm also tiling this twice. Then I will instance it across all UDIM. I'm plugging an edge strong smart mask into the white material. It's a little bit too strong and covered all over than I want it to be, so I will have to adjust this quite a bit. I don't have too much experience with all the different adjustments yet, so mostly I'm just sliding things around and see what it does. I think this is good enough for now. I might need to come back to this later. From the reference, this area actually doesn't have the white edge at all, so I will have to go in and paint it out. Next, I will start to create my first color. We have this gold color that's metallic, so we need to make sure we capture that. I'm creating a new folder called Gold Paint, and I'm creating another fill layer to plug in all my gold textures. For this material, we only need it to be on this one UDIM, so there's no need to instance anything. We need to move this material above the black paint, but underneath the edge. Because the material is metallic, it will have a tighter roughness. We still don't get that metallic look yet. So what I'm going to do is to plug the yellow paint also into the metallic slot. Now you are getting that shiny metal look. I'm just going to adjust the color a little bit and make sure it's matching the reference. Now I'm going to create the red paint in all the cavity area. For this red paint, it's not really metallic, so I need to make sure that I will plug a black and white material into the metallic slot. 
Now I'm going to create a mask for the red paint so it only shows up in ambient occlusion and cavity areas. I'm just using a simple mask builder. I inverted it and also adjusted the concave range a little bit. I think it already looks very good for where it needs to be. Moving on to the next color, I will create a blue paint layer on a different UDIM. In general, all these materials are pretty simple, so all I really need to change is the color and the roughness. As you can see, there is some dark paint showing through the blue, so we will have to create that next. I'm starting to test out some different masks for the blue paint, so some of the dark paint can show through it, and hopefully we can see some of the bare wood show through as well. Again, I'm just adjusting different sliders just to see if I can get something closer to the reference. Now moving on to the green part of the object. Each color the material creation is pretty much the same. I will make the color of the UDIM and then I will create masks so some of the underneath detail can show through. I'm layering each detail according to how the object is made in real life. As you can see, there's another dark layer of green on top, so we will have to make that as well. I make sure I set triplanar for all the fill layers. I basically UV the entire thing in ZBrush. So we definitely need triplanar to make sure we cover all the seams. Now we create another mask for the dark green paint as well. Again, I'm just making a basic mask builder and adjust it. Now I will create the red paint. The process is exactly the same. I will add a mask for the entire red paint so some of the darker paint can come through. There are also two shades of red as well, so I will have to create another darker red paint on top. Looking at the reference again, I think that the chipped wood texture is not coming through as much as I wanted. So I will create another mask builder and multiply it on top of the original paint mask. I'm just going to keep adjusting this until I feel like it's matching the reference better. After I'm happy with the chipped wood mask, I'm gonna start to add darker paint on the red one. From the reference, I can see that the red on the edge is a bit brighter than what's in the middle. So I'm just gonna go in there with a brush and uh, reveal the lighter red paint a little bit. I also noticed that the dark green paint seems to come from the bottom of the geometry and I couldn't really achieve that with the mask builder I already have. So I'm just gonna go in there with a pretty rough brush stroke to create that look. With Substance, I'm trying to avoid hand painting as much as possible and take advantage of all the amazing procedural tools. With the big brush strokes like this, I think we can get away with it. After some painting, this is what we have. Compared to the reference right now, I think the texture still looks quite odd to me. I think it's because my white edge is way more broken up and random compared to the reference. So I think I'm gonna create a new one. I'm going to use a solid edge smart mask this time. I will adjust the mask a little bit, but mostly I'm gonna paint out the area that I don't need the mask because we will have to do some hand painting on this mask. We cannot instance it across all UDIM tiles anymore. Instead, we will have to duplicate it onto every UDIM tile so I can hand paint on every one of them. After a little bit of work, this is the cleaned up version of the mask. I actually decided to deviate the spec quality of the paint a little bit away from the reference. I want it to be a little bit speckier. So you can see a clear difference between the paint on top versus the matte uh, black paint underneath. That's it, after the adjustment, we're pretty much finished with this asset. I hope you enjoy my process of uh, recreating this Balinese pattern. The general approach of an asset doesn't really change just because I'm using a different program. I still need to analyze it well, make sure I know all the characteristics I want to capture, and constantly compare the asset to the reference as I work. 
How to efficiently organize my substancing is still a little bit foreign to me, but that doesn't really stop me from making my asset. I hope you can see that at the end of the day, developing your eye is the most important thing. I hope this is helpful. Please leave any concern or questions you have down below. Please like, subscribe, and join my Facebook group if you need individual help. I will see you in the next one.